Okay, I'm not sure if I told you in previous videos what, how many total videos there would be uh, as part of this, but uh, I might have said this was a three-part lesson. Sorry, it's going to be four parts of me talking plus one more part of somebody else talking, so it's actually going to be a five-part lesson. Um, this this fourth part had to be had to be added after I took a closer look, or more accurately, my students took a closer look at the homework and found some slightly confusing things. So uh, I want to get into some more unusual types of notation in this lesson. It's not all that complicated, but if you've never seen it before, it can be a little bit confusing at first. Once you know what they're talking about, it's uh, it becomes much easier. So the first type of unusual notation is with the compass point, or what's called cardinal directions. And as we all know, north is upwards on the map, south is downwards, east is to the right, and west is to the left. Now, uh, usually in ma mathematical operations, we're not dealing with compass points. We are dealing with, uh, with a Cartesian plane. So east is the plus x direction, south is the minus y direction, west is the minus x direction, and north is the plus y direction. Also, remember that whenever we actually measure the angle of a vector, it's going to be measured from the east, or plus x direction, and positive angles are going to be rotating counterclockwise, negative angles will start at the same place, but will rotate clockwise. It's very common, or it's reasonably common in some textbooks to write something like this. If you have um, velocity is 40 meters per second at 38 degrees north of west. Okay, so obviously we're dealing with a velocity vector, and the 40 meters per second means that the magnitude of velocity is 40 meters per second. No big stretch of the imagination there. This second bit of information tells you the direction of velocity, but as I said before, to a beginner who's never seen this before, it can be a little confusing. The key to reading this sort of notation, where you have degrees, one of the cardinal directions of, and another one of the cardinal directions, the key is to actually read it backwards. Because what it really means, 38 degrees north of west, what that really means is you start in the western direction and you rotate towards the northern direction, 38 degrees. So we start with west, we rotate towards north, and we that rotation is a 38 degree rotation. So it's, our velocity vector is going to point roughly in that direction, and this angle down here is 38 degrees. But that's not the actual direction of the vector. Remember, directions start at the plus x, plus x axis and rotate counterclockwise. Sorry, might have had a bit of a Freudian slip back there. All right, so start at plus x, rotate over to here, and uh, if you realize that from east to west is 38 degrees, I'm sorry, from east to west is 180 degrees, and then we're rotating 38 degrees backwards from there, then this blue angle here that I've drawn is 180 minus 38, or 142 degrees. Because these two have to add up to 180. All right, so that means that the direction of V is going to be 100. 
142 degrees, and then we can use our sine and cosine functions in order to find Vx and Vy. So uh, Vx would therefore be 40 meters per second times the cosine of 142 degrees, and let's pull out a calculator. 40 times cosine 142, that is negative 31.5, but we've only got two sig figs with the 40, so we'll just call that 41. Units of magnitude and units of the components have to be the same, so that's 41, uh, 31 meters per second. Do the sine function. Whoops, just drew a big old streak here. Um, and uh, Vy is going to be the magnitude, 40 meters per second, times the sine of the direction. And that's going to give us 20, positive 25 meters per second. Now, uh, it's OK to have negative x components. That just means that our Vx extends in the negative x direction, which is actually perfectly consistent with what we've drawn over here. Um, Vx is an arrow like that, and that points in the negative x direction. Vy is an arrow like that, and that points in the positive y direction, so that's why Vy is positive. Think of them like coordinates. This is the x coordinate, this is the y coordinate, and since we're in the third quad, uh, second quadrant out here, it's not surprising that the x coordinate is negative. Okay. Uh, let me show you one more example of this before I go on to the other unusual type of notation. Um, let's say we have an acceleration vector. Um, let's say acceleration is 2.19 meters per second squared at... 15 degrees east of south. Okay, so once again, that's the magnitude of acceleration. It's how much acceleration we have. And this part, we have to go to our four quadrant diagram, uh, our, our Cartesian plane, plot it out, read this these uh, directional instructions backwards and then figure out the real angle. So 15 degrees east of south. That means we start at south, rotate east 15 degrees. Start at south, rotate east 15 degrees. So we will have, uh, let's see, I'm running out of colors here. Let me grab a couple more colors. There we go. All right, ooh, purple. Um, 15 degrees is a pretty sharp angle, so it's going to be something like that. So our acceleration vector is going to go something like that. This angle here is going to be 15 degrees. In other words, between the south, the negative y-axis, and our acceleration vector is a 15 degree angle. Okay. So if we want to find the true direction, we can do two, one of two things. We can, take, we can do the usual approach of starting at the plus x axis and rotating all the way around until we hit the acceleration vector. And that's going to be through three 90 degree angles, in other words, 270 degrees plus another 15 degrees. So 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there, 90 degrees there, and another 15 right there. Okay, so one way to answer this would be to say that the direction of A is 270 plus 15, which is 285 degrees. Now, as you can see, it's actually a lot shorter to go this way. But remember, this direction would give you a negative angle. And it's okay to have negative angles. So you could also say, that the direction of A is going to be the angle from here to here, 
and this is going to be, well, from here to here is 90, and from here to here is 15. So we go, we rotate forward 90 and then back 15. That's the same thing as rotating 75 degrees. So this is a negative 75 degree rotation. So you could also call the direction of a negative 75 degrees. And actually, either way, you get yeah, you will get the same components. If we try to calculate components of A from here, AX is equal to magnitude, so that's 2.19 meters per second squared, times the cosine of negative 75 degrees is going to be, pull out the calculator, don't need the graph anymore, Okay, so we got, uh, let me position this so that you can actually see what I'm doing. There we go. All right, so 2.19 times, now let's clear all the junk off. 2.19 times cosine negative 75, close parentheses, execute. This is 0.57 meters per second squared. Okay. Now, if we were to do the same operation, 2.19 times the cosine of, but instead I use the 285 degree angle, surprise, surprise, we get exactly the same thing, 0.566813700. Okay. So uh, you can see from the results on the calculator, it doesn't matter whether you use negative 75 degrees or positive 285 degrees. Uh, the main thing is that you'd be able to interpret these, uh, th uh, this sort of notation. Obviously, due south would be a 270 degree angle or a negative 90 degree angle because it's straight downwards. Due west would be a 180 degree direction. Due north would be a 90 degree direction, and due east would be a zero degree direction. All right, so that's it for the compass point notation. The other type of unusual notation is what's called unit vector notation. And this is a really long and unusually complicated name for a shockingly simple concept. You can often write a vector, say, um, let's say we've got a position vector. This way. Okay. You have the whole vector symbol, not just the magnitude, not just the direction, the whole dang vector is equal to some number with this weird variation on an I. It'll either be an I in bold face or it'll be an I with a hat over it, and sometimes it's even an I with a vector over it, a uh, vector symbol over it, plus some other numbers uh, times uh, multiplied by J, okay? I is a unit vector in the x direction, so whatever comes in front of it is the x component. J is a unit vector in the y direction, so whatever comes before it is the y component. Don't worry if you don't know what a unit vector is. Just know the stuff in front of I, that's the x component. The stuff in front of J, that's the y component. And that's all there is to unit vector notation. So all this means is that dx equals 5.33 meters, and all this means is dy equals 12.12 .12 meters. And from there we could calculate magnitude and direction. Every now and then you see a vector that looks like this. Okay. Uh, oh, uh, I forgot. I forgot to include units. So let's assume it's a unitless vector. All right. Acceleration is 120 J. What happened to the I? Well, there's this implicit. Uh, oops. If I doesn't show up, that means it's multiplied by zero, which means that 
your x component is 0, and your y component is whatever comes in front of the j, which in this case is 120. Okay, you can do the reverse. If we have some vector, uh, oops, wrong color, uh, b, that's, well, let's say this is, um, if it's 93, if I said b is 93 newtons, uh, newtons times i, then there is the implicit plus zero times j. In other words, there's no force in the vertical direction. The other way to say that is that by is equal to zero, and this first part means that bx is 93 newtons. Okay, so just to recap, if you see the I's and the J's, the stuff in front of the I, whether the I is in boldface or it's got this little carrot top over it, um, stuff in front of the I, that's the X component. Stuff in front of the J, that's the Y component. If you're missing one of the components, if you're, if you're missing the I or the J, well, if you're missing the I, that means the X component is zero. If you're missing the J, that means the Y component is zero. That's all there is to it. Okay, um, after this is going to follow a video that was not made by me. It's a uh, it's by a YouTube creator named Flippin Physics, and it applies the basics of what we've been doing over the past few videos to a uh, to a displacement problem. So maybe if you didn't understand uh, understand things the way I was teaching it, you'll understand it the way he was teaching it. Also, you can tell that his production value is higher than zero dollars, so, uh, so he has some slightly more amusing and engaging effects. With that, I'll turn it over to him.